This is Cindy Beyer with Tyler Green. Thank you for joining us today. Happy Easter to those of you who celebrate Easter. Happy Passover to those who celebrate that. We appreciate you joining us um, for part one of a four-part series called Got Balls. So that said, you'll need to grab a ball. And it can be any kind of round ball that you have at home. We just have, um, I picked these up at Walmart. Um, it's called a Headstrong. It's just a playground ball. Uh, you can bring a four square ball if you have one. You can grab a basketball, a volleyball, any kind of a ball, maybe about this size, which is probably about the size of what, like a volleyball? A little bit smaller than a volleyball. You can get something a little bit bigger if you want. I wouldn't go down to the size of like a softball, for at least for this workout. You can go a little bit bigger, as big as a basketball. But make sure you grab your balls and then come back and join me on the mat because today's workout, I'm going to teach you how to use a ball to flatten your abs. All right, let's get going. So we're going to start with this ball here and just place it behind our lower back. So Tyler, if you can move forward just a little bit on the back that way, they can see your balls too. Um, so you're going to take the ball and stick it just at your lower back. It's going to cause you to have to sit up tall right through here. And all you're going to do is keep your hands there and then you're going to roll your spine backwards as though you're trying to lean on it. So I'm going to move my leg out of the way so you, and my arms so you can see what I've just done, right? So I've rolled my spine back, right? And then come back up. So have your knees bent, Tyler. And then what you're going to do is you're going to roll back as if you're going to lounge on it. So I'm not sinking all my effort into it. I'm just connecting to that ball so it doesn't move away from me. My belly button is pulling in towards my spine so that I can connect into that ball so it won't go anywhere. Very good. Now from here, all I'm going to have you do is just sit up just a little bit. And then you're going to roll back to it. And then sit up just a little bit. It's a really small movement. You might not even really be able to see much of what's happening with me. But all I'm doing is really pulling my belly and pushing my lower back to the ball. And then back up. I'm really firing into these lower fibers of my abdominals here. And up. Uh, We've done this exercise before. I really, really love it with the ball because it allows you to really connect deep into those abdominals, the, the lower fibers of your rectus abdominals. That's lower and that's more than your six pack, right? So your six pack is on the surface higher up. These are deeper and lower down toward your legs. Very good. Two more here, pull and roll back. Lift up, roll back. It's hard. It's hard? Mm -hmm. And lift up. Now what you're going to do from here, hold your ball with your hands, and then roll forward slightly so the ball comes up across your rib cage. But you're going to have to lift your butt and reach it forward ever so slightly from there. So you want your, your tailbone, Tyler, down on the floor. Yes. So now from here, you're going to do that same thing. You're going to pull the belly in towards the back, right where you're sitting, and then release and you pull the belly in towards the back and release. But what you're gonna do when you're doing that, you're gonna feel that pelvis curl under slightly. So again, we're really targeting in to those lower fibers of the rectus abdominals. Now, if you have been coming uh, on these, show, these uh, videos with me before, you'll know that when we do curl ups, I tell you purposely not to curl your pelvis under. That is correct. However, when we're curling down and we're going down, your pelvis curls under to initiate that move. So you can see I'm rolling back and I'm releasing and I'm rolling my pelvis under and I'm releasing and at this point I can feel my abdominals getting really tight. Very nice. Now from here, you're just going to lift your butt up and roll a little further. So now it's going to come just at the edge of my shoulder blades. Swoop down a little bit further from there. Is it okay to crash my back? It will grab your back in just a minute. <laughs> Hopefully, that's a bonus. All right, so now from here, same idea. We're going to really drop that pelvis under until our lower back hits so we can get this comfortable position. But then what I want you to do is find a neutral position for your pelvis. So take your thumbs at the bottom of your ribs. And then take your middle fingers and bring them down to your pelvis. And what I want you to do is pull the ribs towards the pelvis until they connect. All right? If you have to, like I have to 
lift up and bring my tailbone away from me a little bit further. Very nice. Now, from here, all you're gonna do is take your hands back around your head. This is where I love this ball. What's gonna happen is I'm going to open my chest up over the back of the ball. So the ball almost rolls under me as I do it. I'm gonna allow my body to push that ball. I'll do it with this hand. Push that ball this way, you know, see how my body is rolling that ball? And then I'm going to come back up into that small stomach crunch position that I started with. So I'm gonna do that again. So I'm going to roll the ball, and my spine opens up backwards. It's a nice opening of the pecs, of the spine, and then I'm gonna come through neutral into a small flexion of the spine. Where is this awesome? This is awesome because it really targets into the abdominals. You won't necessarily feel the same burn as if you're just doing sit-ups flat on the floor. What happens is we're now taking you past a neutral spine. When you're flat on the floor, your spine is neutral, and then you do small stomach crunches. Here, we're going into extension, which is elongating the abdominal muscles. So you're starting in a really lengthened position. And then, just to come back to neutral, my abdominals have to work to get me from extension to neutral. Now I can go a little further, and I'm getting a bigger bend for the buck as I'm doing this move. So I'm gonna open that chest. Did you feel your spine crack yet? Yep. And come back, past neutral, into a small flexion, and do one more here. So the ball is actually moving under my body. Look at that nice arch that I'm getting right here. See? That kind of looks funny on the video as I put my hand under it. Can you see that, Tyler? In the video? No. <laughs> and then come up. All right. Now, from here, you're going to still hold this upper position here in this small stomach crunch. And you're going to take one foot and plant it down onto the mat. Then you're going to take the other leg and lift that knee up. Then you're going to tap it down. Let's tap it down four times. You want to keep the angle of the knee the same. You're just changing the angle of your hip. Meaning you're not changing this. You're not going like this with your knee. You're pushing the leg away and lifting it up from that hip. All the while making sure this other leg is not wobbly. So Tyler, flex up a little bit more, not backwards, up. So push backwards towards the ball. So yes, and then after you're doing a small sit-up. Yes, and then move that leg up and down, perfect. Now if you do need to rest, it's no problem. You've got that ball there and you can just open up that chest behind you at any point in time. Take your other leg now and lift it up and tap it down. This is a variation of toe taps that we've done. What you'll find if you're holding this flexion is your lower abs, these fibers from the belly button down are really working much harder than when you're laying flat on the ground. That's why the ball to work your abs is incredible because it helps hold your alignment. Good, place that foot down. Go ahead and just rest by opening up the chest behind you. That will arch your back and then come back to that same position. So you're gonna feel that ball roll as I hold this position. This position is phenomenal for people who get tension in their neck. What it does is it helps to hold this abdominal crunch position without putting the strain into the neck. All right, now from here, we're going to bring one leg up again and just straighten it out and bend it in. You can have your hands down on the floor or up behind your head, whichever is more comfortable for you. If they're on the floor, I like to have my elbows back towards my shoulders because then that supports a nice alignment of my shoulders. Place that foot down. Other leg comes up. I'm gonna reach that leg out and I'm gonna come back in. Notice that when I reach that leg out, my knees end at the same height, right? So I'm not creating it lower. My abdominals will kick off if I go too low. I don't want that. I wanna get the most bang for the buck on this. Reach, try one more here. Reach out. Thanks so much for joining us today. Bring that foot down if you need a break. Go ahead and just open that chest. Very nice. Remember that all these videos are uploaded onto YouTube shortly after our live video feed. So if you haven't done so already, I encourage you to go ahead and subscribe. That way you won't ever miss a video, especially if you're not on Facebook Live when we're doing it. This way you, you don't have to try to weed through my, my personal feed on Facebook to see where the latest video is. It all comes right up onto the YouTube. 
Cindy Byer, spelled B-Y-E-R, my last name, and the Pilates point. All right, lift the other leg back up. So we're going to the leg we started with already. And then what we're going to do from here is we're going to reach it out. Now lift it towards the ceiling, bend that knee, and reach it out again. And then back up, bend and reach. And if you don't have the time to work through the entire 30 minutes of the workout, that's okay as well. You can join in for 15 minutes at a time, five minutes at a time, or 10 minutes at a time, and that's perfectly okay. Go into a leg circle, same leg, goes out to the side, around and down. What you're gonna notice on this leg circle is you're a little wobblier because you have this ball underneath your back, so it makes the move a little bit more challenging. What it challenges is, where it challenges is on the core. Very good, place that foot down. Other leg comes up. Are your abs still in you right now? Mm -hmm. Good. Reach out. <laughs> and then you come back in and reach out. And like I said at the beginning of this video today, this is part one of four parts where I'm going to show you how to use your balls to flatten your abs, strengthen your legs, and get an incredible workout. So today is just part one. So be sure to tune in tomorrow and the next three days after today. Now, bend the knee in, leg goes up, and then lower that down. Look at how great your form feels and looks as you're leaning back. You see how I'm just leaning back onto that ball? But that really helps to change the dynamic of the position and the alignment of your body. Now, hold it up. Let's do a leg circle. Go down, out to the side, around and up. Again, you're trying to make sure this other leg is not wiggling and wobbling as much as you can. You've got to press the inside of that leg towards the other leg in order to stabilize it. Try one more here, and then go down from here, and then arch over the back of the ball here. Then come back to that same position you were just in. Now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to take one leg, lift it up. And then from there, we're going to turn just our torso. The ball gets pushed behind me as I do. Did you fall off the ball? Yeah, <laughs> so if that happens to you, understand that it will happen. I have fallen off the ball before as well. What's going to happen, what we want to do is really press your back into that ball. And then as you rotate, you're taking your shoulder blade and pressing that shoulder into that ball. So see how as I turn, I'm moving that ball with me, right? If you have a slippery, slidey shirt on, it might cause you to, to fall because the ball will slip. Good, now we're gonna do the other side. Lift that leg up, and what you'll see when I do this here, I'm just turning my body, but that ball is actually rolling with me. This is kick your butt oblique work, let me tell you. Turn and rotate, and fall off the ball again. I should have you in the front, that way they can see you when you fall. It's funny about that. Come back, and foot comes down. All right, bring the other leg up again. Now, we're going to add into this. You can feel free to stay with that knee bent, or you can have both knees bent and feet on the floor if you want to. I'm going to go to another level, and Tyler, you might want to stay with both feet on the floor um, so that you don't fall, but you don't have to. You can try it the other way. I think that would be more entertaining. All right, legs come up. But what's going to happen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn and rotate and reach that leg. But again, I'm pushing that ball behind me with my rib cage. And then I come back in. I'm going to stay on the same side and do about three more. So I'm going to do four on each side. Is that easier for you to keep rebalancing with your foot down? Okay, good. And then back to the center, other side from here. From there, you're gonna reach that leg out as you turn, and then come back to the center. I'm pushing that ball with my rib cage on the back side of my body. And what it's doing is it's causing the obliques on the front side of my body to really kick in. Let's try one more here. Very good. Come back to the center. Reposition yourself on your ball. I keep sliding back. I'm gonna do one more set on each side. So lift up one leg from here. And again, you can do it with both feet on the floor, or you can do it with the leg staying still. I'm going to move it. 
meaning I'm reaching my leg out, let's do four more. So we go four, we're pushing right here. I'm pushing that ball away, and then I'm coming back in. I'm not lifting higher off the ball. I'm actually pressing backwards into the ball. And then back, try two more, and then back. You're doing great, Ty, look at that. One more, and back. Other side, lift that leg up. And we push that ball through the back side of the body and in. So it's a little bit different than we normally feel when we're doing oblique work. Typically, you're lifting, you're pulling your neck, and you're pulling yourself towards that ball. Here, all I'm doing is turning, and I'm actually moving backwards. Come back down. Now from here, so it's a lot different, and it's more intense. So if you love more intense work for those obliques especially, then this is the oblique work for you. So give me a thumbs up or a heart or several of them if, that, if that's something you like. Again, from here, all you're going to do from there is you're going to slide down and then arch your back over the ball this time. So my head is reaching out. So you can even, Tyler, you can even move closer towards your feet. Yep. And then you're going to push back towards the ball and sit yourself up a little bit. I think Tyler just wants to stay down, right? You like staying down? Sorry. It's okay. Does it feel good? Yeah. All right. So then you're going to open up and arch over that ball. I'm going down where this is hitting me on my neck just because it feels really good. So if you, if you or even if you're kids, if you have kids and they have tech neck, this is a really great way to start getting rid of some of that tension in your neck, especially right now when we're all stuck at home and we can't get out to get a massage for our neck. So if you have pain in your neck, this is a really great way to open up that chest and to release that back. Good, let's do about two more. Open up and go backwards and then come forward and then one more here. Open up to go back and come up. And then you can just sit yourself up however you need to. Don't fall again. Okay. We're going to come all the way up. You could stay there all day, right? Yeah. It's not so bad. But if you're doing, if you're doing like ab work, holding an abdominal crunch is hard to do. But notice how simple it felt, how much simpler it felt with the ball back there. Yeah, it was? Yeah. Did you feel tension in your neck? No, not at all. Oh, that's good. When I rolled back, my neck cracked a couple times. Oh, see, that's bonus. All right, so take your ball, and this time we're going to roll onto our stump. Thanks again for tuning in with us today. We're going to use this now to continue to open our body up by going backwards. So what I'd like you to do from here is, so my legs are together here, right? I'm going to open my legs about the, to where my feet are about the width of the mat. Then I'm going to turn out at my hips. And I do that because it's going to provide more movement into my pelvis against my lower back, right? Okay. And then I'm going to bring my hands here. So now I'm going to use that ball, just like I was doing before, as a way of leading my body in the direction I want it to go. So what I'm going to do from here, first of all, I can roll that ball away and get this really nice length. And so I'm going to roll that ball away, bring my body up down so my head goes towards the floor. I get this nice stretch. At the same time, my feet are reaching backwards. Now, from here, I'm going to bend my elbows backwards towards my face, and as the ball comes towards me, I'm going to just press gently and lift a little bit. And then I'm going to lower back down. So what I'm doing is I'm using this ball to guide the lift. So as the ball comes to my head, I'm going to lift and extend. Good. It's not, it doesn't matter how high up you come. What matters is where you're lifting from. I want the power to come from the glutes to help lift you up. Very nice. Now let's bring the ball back here, hold there. Then from here, you're going to press down into the hands and lift higher, and then lower down. Do that again, lift. Every time you lift, you want to think, connect through your inner thighs and get your glutes to help with the process. Squeeze your butt. Squeeze, well, kind of squeeze your butt. It's not quite, but yes, your glutes are gonna be engaged. Um, good, so you will feel your glutes working. That's correct, because that's where your extension is coming from. All of the movement of your back, when you get into extension, is going to start from those glutes. 
One more. That's how you prevent yourself from going into your lower back or putting too much pressure. Now just reach back out and come all the way back down from here. You guys, you feeling okay, Tyler? Yeah, I'm good. Awesome. All right, so now what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to take that ball and bring it here under my chest. And then all I'm going to do is roll forward onto it. So it's holding me in this little bit of an extension. All right? So ladies, if you're kind of chesty, you might have to push the ladies out of the way a little bit to have this kind of get positioned properly. But it's pretty much at your sternum. So it's holding me in this little back extension, right? So from here, my arms could float up. So let's lift your arms up. Again, you want to connect right to the glutes to hold you there. Your hands, like if my elbows are down here, so bring them back a little further to the It basically, they're not, there's no support on the arms at all. I'm just holding that position, right? Now from there, I'm going to hold the ball with my hands. And I'm just going to simply roll the ball back under my body a little further and then bring myself back down. Myself instead of myself, sorry. Lift from here and then lower. So all I'm doing is just lifting my body off that ball a little bit and then pressing back down. It's just like when we started and we did the half roll back where we connected into the ball and then we disconnected from it. So I'm connecting in and I'm disconnecting. What's really nice about this is that it's holding my chest nice and open and I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure into my lower back in the process. So the ball is providing support. Very nice. Roll that ball out and lower down into that stretched position. Very nice. Bring your legs back together. Push yourself back to here. Then all we're going to do from here is we're going to roll that ball away, lean with it, let your pelvis sit towards your feet as your arms reach in front. Very good. Then come back up, sitting up tall. So I'm going to sit back towards my feet as much as I can. Oh, you're sitting back towards your feet better. Yeah. When did that start? I stretched today. You stretched today? <laughs> yeah, but in the, in the course of the last two weeks, you're now able to sit back. Yep. That's pretty good. Five stars. You got to start today. Roll back. Do you guys all remember the star charts that your mom see those for you? All right, reach. And then come back up. And do one more there. Roll out and then reach here. And then come back and then lift from there. Very nice. From here, we're gonna take the ball in front of us here under our hand. And I'm gonna use it for some leverage. I'm gonna press myself up. I'm gonna take my opposite leg and reach it back. Then I'm gonna take this ball and roll it away as I lift my leg higher. So I'm gonna come into the screen a little bit better. Here, good. I don't wanna sink down, I want to stay lifted, right? Then I'm gonna roll the ball back in as I bend my knee and slide it forward, and then I'm gonna reach back out again. This, just like we were talking about the other day, this is working to stabilize your spine. It's working the spinal stabilizing muscles the multifidus, the muscles that are going to interweave among each of the vertebrae of the spine. We want those to be mobile. We also want them to be stable at the same time because it will hold your vertebrae in place where you need it to be. Good. One more on this side. Reach. And then come back. Other side from here. I'm going to hold that ball here. My hand is going to be on the floor. I'm going to reach my leg back first. Then I'm going to take the ball and roll it away, my finger walk it away, and then I lift my leg a little higher to whatever is your comfort level. Feel like you're reaching energy through that leg. Then you're going to bend your knee and roll the ball back. Good. And reach it forward. In this position, the ball is serving as a, uh, not quite a support, but a guide of where we're going to bring that arm. And it's an unstable surface, causing my body to have to balance against the wobbliness of that ball. Good, one more here, reach. And then come back to the center. Very nice, go ahead and sit down with me here. And we're gonna take the ball into our hands in front of us here. So I'm going to take my fingertips and just kind of press and hold that ball here. Bring my elbows up, hold that ball, and I'm gonna sit up as tall as I can and I'm gonna to twist towards one side. 
feel like I'm pushing my elbow behind me, but I am squeezing that ball with my fingers. So I'm back to the center, and I'm gonna do it to the other side. What I'm really paying attention to when I'm doing this spine twist is that I'm rotating from my rib cage around my body as I go, not just, I'm not just moving my arms, I'm keeping that ball centered right at my sternum here, and I'm turning from my ribs, so my arms are locked. They're not moving across the body. My body is turning. So turn again, three times. Come back to the center, two more, or sorry, uh, three here, and then two more to each direction. That way we can stay even. I'm not the best at counting, as you can see. If you haven't discovered it, you will soon. One more in each direction from here. Thanks again so much for joining me today for part one of our ball series, Got Balls. And come back tomorrow. We've got another one where the ball is going to be used in a different position than behind our back or in our hands. We're going to be using it a little bit more between our legs. So bring a ball with you tomorrow, and we'll see you then. Take care.